Cześć tyle. Good morning to all. I'm Tenzin Nonzom. I've been teaching history subject at one of the schools of Sambuta Tibetan School Society, Dharamsala. On today's first day of history class, I would cover up several topics of the class 11, first chapter that is called From the Beginning of Time. And these are the topics which I've planned to be covered up today. Sources to restudy the early humans, the story of human evolution, classification of homo, and finally the names for the fossils. So the current chapter, namely from the beginning of time, deals with restudying about the process of human evolution on the Earth's surface, particularly starting from the period of primates, that is from 36 million years ago. Now my first question to my students is, when did the first human-like creatures appear on the Earth's surface? This must be a tough question to all of you. If I would ask a question, when is your birthday? You would definitely answer it very happily, right? And in return, you would also question me the same, madam, when is your birthday? Right? So, sometimes you must know the important events occurred in the world by knowing about a particular timeline of an event occurred in the world, uh, such as uh, knowing about your birthday, right? Knowing about the important events occurred in the world. So likewise, knowing about, you know, the emergence of human-like creatures on the Earth's surface is really important, right? Now, the answer is, it was around 5.6 million years ago, the human-like creatures appeared on the Earth's surface. So with the passage of time, several forms of species have been emerged and they all have become extinct. Human beings have resembled to us and they were known as modern humans and they were originated about 160,000 years ago. So the story of human evolution has been classified into several stages. It has been a very long story to be learned by all of us, right? Now, before I move on to the important topic, my next question is from what sources we could restudy about the early humans? For example, from what sources I could restudy about your past life? So how could I know about your past life? That's my question. Okay. I may know about you from your close friends, your written works, your di including your diaries, all by collecting some other, you know, oral information uh, from your distant relatives, near relatives, right? So sources. Sources to restudy the early humans, that is the first topic. Sources means the books, the written works, the diaries, the oral stories, and the artifacts. Whatever it may be, but it should provide some information about something or someone. Got it? That is called sources. So sources means uh, anything, anything which could provide information about something or someone. So that is sources. Sources to restudy the early humans. So in your text, 
these three sources are particularly mentioned. The first one is the human fossils. Second one, the stone tools. Whereas the last one is the cave paintings. Before I would throw light on the features of the human fossils, you must know the meaning of fossils. So what are fossils? So fossils are the remains or impressions of a very old plant, animal or human which have gradually turned into stone. And these are mainly fixed into rock and thus have been preserved for millions of years. Paleontology is the study of fossils. It is a kind of subject which deals with studying about fossils. So the meaning of fossil has been clear to all of you, right? Fossils, paleontology means the subject. Paleontology, logist means a doer or is a scientist who studies fossils. So this is an example of fossil. This is an image of a lizard having fixed in a piece of uh, stone. Next one is uh, the fossil of an animal. This one is the fossil of nidrathals. Nidrathal, you know, might have been buried along with the sediments. Now, human fossil. So, the particular evidence for human evolution comes from species of humans which have already become extinct. So, human fossils can be dated either through chemical examination or indirectly by dating the sediments in which they are buried. So, once uh, the fossils are dated, the sequence or the line of studying about human evolution can be made very easily. Now you must know the advantages of studying human fossil. Advantages means use, uses, benefits, okay, merits. The first point is dealt with by studying human fossil, we are able to know about when the early humans emerged. When were they emerged? The physical structure of the early humans, the distribution of early humans' population throughout the world, the dietary practices of the early humans. So these are the advantages of studying human fossil. So how are fossils dated by paleont paleontologists? How are they dated by paleontologists? Next source is based on the stone tools. So these are the various stone tools produced by the early humans. Uh, stones are of various size, shapes, and they are mostly made, made up from pebbles. Okay. So stone tools mainly offer, you know, evidence regarding how the early humans made things possible. Where were they lived? How did they make interaction with the surroundings? What were the abilities uh, uh, maintained to survive? by the early humans. So it further provides evidence about a wide range of stone tools, the hunting techniques utilized by early humans, uh, the flexibility of hands which enabled early humans to produce uh, some other uh, beneficial objects, the particular kinds of mental skills possessed by early humans, or uh, the innovations uh, undertaken by early humans. Got it? And next, how are these stone tools used? Where are they used? 
Stone tools were used to cut either meat, bone, scrape bark from trees and heights, chop wood, fruit and roots. So some may have been attached to handles of either stone or wood materials in order to uh, produce uh, spares, arrows for hunting and stitching clothes made up of animal skin. So the examples of stone tools are stone chisels, stone axes, stone hammers, stone knives, stone spears and sharp stone tipped arrows. Sharp stone tipped arrows are used for hunting purpose. Now you must state some benefits of the stone tools for early humans. So after having gone through those points, you must know how to answer this question. The thought so is based on cave paintings. Here you can have a glimpse of a wide range of animals uh, depicted on the wall of the caves. This one, okay. And this one clearly indicates uh, the figures of humans carrying a wide range of objects and that must be bow, arrow, spear, thrower. Around them, there are a wide range of animals uh, painted with great accuracy. Cave painting at Altamira. So, a wide range of paintings of animals uh, had been discovered in the caves of France and Altamira in Spain. So, those mainly included what? The depictions of bison, horses, mammoths, lions, bears, panthers, and owls. So, it seems that the act of painting might have been a ritual in order to ensure a successful hunt by early humans. So this is a bison painted on the wall of cave of Aldamira. In India also, there are a number of caves discovered by archeologists. So in some of the caves where the early humans had been lived, had paintings on the walls. And some of the best examples of cave paintings are evident from Madhya Pradesh and Southern Uttar Pradesh. So these paintings mainly exhibit uh, wild animals uh, drawn with great uh, accuracy and skill. So most of the paintings had been focused on the humans and animals. Uh, the early humans had utilized uh, natural colors. Uh, so these were made up of uh, the materials uh, such as mineral pigments, uh, red ochre, and black manganese. And the early humans had particularly drawn stick figure for people. But the animals are all drawn with accuracy. Historians or we do not have actual reasons as to why the early humans made their paintings. We are not known the exact things as to why the early humans made paintings. So the answers are probable, okay, based on assumptions. So Maybe due to the importance of hunting, the paintings of animals are uh, basically linked with ritual and magic. It seems that caves were served as the meeting places, particularly for small groups of people or uh, served as locations for group activities. The early humans, uh, it seems, might have been shared their hunting techniques and knowledge that is through painting. So paintings drawn on the wall of the caves served as the media for passing information from one generation to another. 
And it also seems that the wide range of animals drawn by the early humans on the walls of the cave directly linked with their hunting activities. Got it? They might have been hunted them on a routine basis. So about 200 years ago, when such discoveries about uh, the human fossils, cave paintings, or stone tools were first made, scholars are totally reluctant to accept that those are particularly linked with the early forms of humans. They fail to understand that the early humans did possess the capability to produce a wide range of stone tools or make uh, proper paintings on the walls. So it also seems that their unreluctance to accept the available sources are generally originated from their belief in the Old Testament of Bible wherein human being was considered as an act of creation of God. Now my next question, what could be the essential roles of cave paintings in throwing light on early humans? To some extent, you must know how to answer this question. To what extent the available sources of stone tools, cave paintings, human fossils help in restudying about the past humans? Uh, let us have a glimpse at the precursors of modern human beings closely in order to restudy the story of human evolution. This is the illustration showing the different kinds of skulls. A belongs to an ape, B belongs to a species known as Australopithecus, C belongs to a species known as Homo erectus or the upright man, and D belongs to a species known as Homo sapiens. Now, can you find any similarities and dissimilarities of these skulls? Just try to find out on the basis of the size of skull, the size of brain case, the size of cheek, the size of jaws. Can you list some similarities and dissimilarities while looking carefully of those girls through the given illustration? Some amounts you might have known the similarities and dissimilarities of those given skulls. So the similarities and dissimilarities of the skulls are mainly based on the following features. The first is based on the skull size, the size of the skull. The size of the skull may be small, big, right? The distinctive jaws. Jaws are of two kinds. Jaws with a reduced protrusion. I have a jaws with a reduced protrusion, right? And next, jaws with an outward protrusion. Outward means which comes out. Okay, outward protrusion. Next, the bone structure may be hard or saw, like that. And next, size of teeth. The size of teeth uh, differs from uh, differs from one to another, such as uh, it may be long, large, small, right? 
And next, the size of brain case. The brain case, as I stated before, may be uh, small or big, right? So these uh, are the features mainly determines the similarities and dissimilarities of the skulls. The story of human evolution. So the story of human evolution is uh, enormously long and somewhat, you know, complicated, right? And there are many unanswered questions uh, yet to be understood by historians, archaeologists, and the new available data for historians often lead to have revision or modification of the earlier uh, forms of explanations, right? So the story of human evolution has linked into several stages. The first stage is based on primates. Who are primates, right? Question comes here, who are primates? Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? Okay, primates are a subgroup of a larger group of mammals and they include uh, monkeys, uh, apes, and even humans. They have body hair, a relatively long gestation period. Gestation period means uh, the period starting from the pregnancy to its delivery. And next, memory glands, different types of teeth, and the ability to maintain continuous body temperature throughout day and night. And they were emerged in Asia and Africa by about 36 million years ago. Primates, they have long hair, they are hairy. You can find it, they are hairy. Throw light on the salient features of primates. You have already studied the features of primates, right? So you must know how to answer it properly. So these are the points you must remember. First one, the meaning and origin. I mean, when you study about the earlier form of humans, you must know about these features. These are the things to remember by you. Meanings, meaning of a particular species, origin of a particular species, the physical features possessed by them, the time and period, the time and period of which they were emerged, and next the physical functions, a wide range of uh, functions uh, carried out by them, and lastly the distribution of population. The, so the distribution of population is differed from uh, one to another, right? Such as a uh, wide range of areas, countries, or maybe continents. Okay, so you must know these points. The second phase 